Hello, everybody. Ma'am. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. But what is the procedure? You, you can, yeah. can you can start. Before you start, Sanjeev Dada, please go ahead. Dada, Sanjeev, please you're muted. Unmuted. Hello, good evening, everyone, and happy Easter. It is said, research is to see what everybody has seen and to think what nobody has ever thought. Here we are with another informative and interesting lecture on practical solution for your research problems organized by Cultural Studies Research Forum. There are many potential scholars with excellent academic background, but now they are struggling with their either research topic or they are afraid of facing their PhD interviews or some are feeling helpless drafting their final thesis even. So we will get some insight secrets from someone who has been teaching students and guiding research scholar for more than 25 years now. It is her smile, her gestures, her motivation that makes students fall in love with literature. And it is her experience that enkindles the initial spark inside a potential research scholar. I welcome each and every one of you to this enlightening lecture. Before I conclude, I would like to say a few words about our Cultural Studies Research Forum. Cultural Studies Research Forum is a non-profit enterprise started by the student of volunteers to organize free public lectures, courses, and discussions in various aspects of research and cultural studies. It was inaugurated on uh, 13th April, 2021. And we invite all of you to take initiative to organize our lectures and connect us with independent researchers, professors, and scholars from across India to keep this program running successfully. This is our forum, and each and every one of us has equal opportunity here to initiate meaningful discussions. Please do continue supporting us and help us expanding more and more. Research is creating new knowledge, said Neil Armstrong long before. Today, our speaker is the director of Vallath Tes, the co-CEO of Voditi and QSOP, Dr. Kalani Vallath, who has molded the careers of thousands of professors, young professors in India. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome Dr. Kalani Vallath to handle today's session. Let's all dig into the lecture now. Over to you, ma'am, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Sandeep Mandal. I am very happy to uh, be able to speak to you today about research. We know that there are several avenues for all of us to know about research and research areas, yet we are all completely not sure how to do it. Many of us are not confident enough, some of us are confused. So from my own experience of uh, doing research and reading, today I will be sharing some practical uh, solutions to some of our problems. I hope it will be beneficial to all of you. Now, um, my lecture or uh, session here today is coming in the line of great lectures that Culture Studies Research Forum has been organizing. Definitely, this is one of the small and insignificant ones. There are so many other lectures that a wonderful, vibrant team of research scholars and um, English literature enthusiasts have organized in the past two years, where I have been learning from. I am really privileged to be part of that glorious uh, group of uh, August speakers and scholars who have been enlightening our Culture Studies Research Forum members. 
So I will share my screen now. I have titled my lecture, Practical uh, Solutions for Your Research Problems. This presentation will take you through various aspects of research and reading. Uh, I am not actually focusing on academic writing as such, uh, which I will touch upon, of course, but I will be focusing more on how to collect the right kind of material and how to think and how to um, you know, lead from one topic or aspect to another, because that is a challenge for most people. Uh, so that will be the focus. The biggest challenge is understanding your research area and finding a topic. And even after you find the research area to understand and to get and understand the right kind of material. That is where I'll be focusing on finding the appropriate material. We will also in this session, look at uh, some of the tools to be used. I, I will just mention some of the tools. There is uh, next month, an online lecture we'll be organizing about research uh, technology, technology that can be used in research. If you are interested, that will be, I think it is in June, uh, that lecture is coming up. If you are interested to know more about the tools, that lecture will help you. And organizing literature review, how to uh, read and organize it, we will touch upon. Getting the methodology right, how to do the chapter divisions and best writing habits. The one marked in red will be the main focus. Even though I have said research area, it will be also useful for people who have a research area so that they will understand how to connect and think and uh, write. Now, for uh, a lot of people who are beginning to do research, uh, let me just introduce by drawing your attention to the structure of a research proposal. First and foremost, you need an area. Uh, that interests you where you will research on. In that area, you need to find a topic and the topic should be put across in a, an appropriate title. So that area, that is actually half the research done. If you know the topic and title and uh, do a lot of reading for that purpose to identify the title, it's actually half done. And then you need to know what is the rationale for your research. Rationale means why are you doing this research? What is the contribution that you will be making uh, to intellectual disciplines and your society with this research? And uh, uh, what is the literature review? What kind of studies have already been done in this area? So you have to read all the uh, possible literature in that area and position your research project within the existing literature. This is why in one month or two months, you cannot actually uh, reach a research topic and write a proposal. Many people find it a great struggle to uh, start their research and find a topic because they are uh, under the probably wrong notion that uh, we have to start with a title. But that was the old method of research. Post-colonial uh, approach to Derek Walcott's place, you know, like that we used to frame research topics in the past. But today, because so many, many people are doing research, that those kind of topics are completely out of fashion. In every university, even small universities, they want you to look at something very new and not so researched on, etc. And also, uh, it is better if you can make it interdisciplinary and uh, you can make it very uh, complex in terms of methodology and theory because only then you will even be accepted for a research program. So even before you pass um, uh, an eligibility test like JRF, even before you write the entrance exam of a university, at least some months before that, the first thing you should do is to start reading up and identifying a research area. Because as soon as you pass the exam, within a month or so, you will have to make, uh, present your title proposal, don't do not wait for that time. You have to do it early enough because it will not be sufficient. The time that you get after the exam result, that time will not be sufficient. So in the research proposal, first you introduce your area, topic and title. Then you have to provide the rationale for why you are writing, uh, doing this research project. And then you have to write about the methodology. 
The methodology is the uh, theories that you are using, the concepts that you are employing, and how uh, you will use them in your topic. Uh, that is what is called methodology. Many times we use a multifocal lens of theory, not just one theory, but many theories. Understand that theory is a perspective. The first thing when you we should all do when we do research is to read a lot of theories and uh, understand uh, what it means by a theoretical perspective. How do you read a book from a post-colonial perspective? How do you read a book from a feminist perspective? It can be a combination of feminist and post-colonial perspectives. It is not enough that we read the theory. It is also necessary that we read other people's research dissertations and proposals, etc., to see how they have done it. So research naturally takes a few months, at least six months, I would say, uh, to be on track. It is only normal. Uh, do not have the, uh, the, the wrong idea that we will first pass the exam, then get into a research, uh, research uh, course, and then we'll think of the topic. That is not so. And whatever work we have done, reading we have done, we have to put at the end of the research proposal as well as the dissertation as the bibliography. Bibliography or works cited. Uh, sometimes we will cite uh, quotations, etc. from other books in our proposal and dissertation. And those books should be quoted here. Now, even when we ideally, even when you take ideas that are not our own, we should cite those ideas. Uh, in India, traditionally, uh, a lot of us in our educational system have been copy pasting and taking other people's ideas, etc., for various reasons. One is that many of us got into research projects without, without even knowing what is research and how it should be done without a foundation. It's not our fault, really. Secondly, uh, there was a sudden influx of so much material online, but nobody really guided us how to use this material. And thirdly, and most importantly, English is not our um, mother tongue. And we are all struggling to understand original theories and uh, original books because it is not easy for us to understand this language and understand the concepts. All this is natural. And lastly, uh, we are pressurized because in the West, uh, there are so many months and years that people take and there is... Uh, financial support that they get, etc. But many of us are pressurized to immediately do PhD, immediately to get a job, etc. So these, within these limitations, uh, the ethics of uh, research has been seriously uh, compromised. But uh, with the coming of NEP and new educational policies and developments, it is going to be very important that we do our research properly. So do not be in a hurry. Uh, find a solution for your problems. Research cannot be the solution. It is actually your problem. So uh, we should spend time on research, master it, read a lot. The first practical solution that I can give, and it's a foolproof solution, read with a structured plan so that you understand about the area that you are reading, you that you want to uh, do research on, you understand the theories that you will be applying and uh, using, and you also understand how to do research. So do spend some time on that. I hope this uh, uh, presentation that you're all attending will help you with that. So coming directly to the research area and topic, how do you get it? Do not get a fancy topic that somebody else suggests, because um, it has to come from you. It has to come from your reading. It has to come from your experience. That is when it works best. That is when you will be able to speak confidently and write clearly. If you are in a hurry and get topics from other people, it may not work because you can't identify with it. You know, it is like marrying somebody whom you don't know. It is better to know that person and find out whether this person suits you and then get married. Because otherwise, research is like marriage. You will have to spend like five, six long years with this topic, with this area. So do it carefully. 
don't jump into somebody's uh, suggestion and make a mess of your uh, life that is very important so choose a topic that actually interests you if some of you are from ba course or you are doing your ma course uh, and you're not in a hurry to do research best that is when you should really begin thinking about research you have to start thinking about research even when you are in your ba or ma and start reading upon that area and then slowly slowly you will become experts in that area the problem we have in india is that we are hurrying with it and jumping into an area so as soon as possible choose an area that actually interests you and that you can relate with it is like getting married or building a house etc do you understand you have to find an area that you can go and understand and relate to something should be there that is related to your culture or your experience or your interests some of us will be interested in gender some of us will be interested in history some of us will be interested in actually working for subaltern people some of us will be interested in theoretical ideas in philosophy so relate uh, to topics and areas and choose it your topic don't worry at the beginning your topic will not be the best and the most complete topic it can be changed a bit after you start doing some initial research so don't look for that final topic at the beginning the area is important and one direction is enough and pick a topic that is manageable your topic if it is too broad i know that these are all very uh commonly known things that i'm saying i will come to other areas this is just by, by way of introduction if your topic is too broad you won't be able to condense it if it is too narrow you won't be able to find enough secondary material to write about it so there if you are inexperienced you might need somebody's help to find out how to shape the topic how to shape your area and topic there you might be uh, taking somebody else's help also who's experienced in it that is where you have a guide a supervisor or a guide is only a guide is only a supervisor a supervisor or guide should not spoon feed you a supervisor or guide should not be an expert in your area you are the expert in your area so you should act like that you are like an expert talking to another expert your supervisor is the expert and he or she will help you shape your topic your argument can be inductive or deductive in i will explain this further don't worry inductive means start from a hypothesis maybe it is like that in uh, post independence india maybe uh, people uh, are doing something or maybe in this uh, in rural areas people cannot speak english and those who speak english may be using social media more like that one may be question is hypothesis maybe in post independence india men are uh, not so patriarchal as before and people accept gender fluidity you know like that one may be question you start with you don't have to write it down i'm talking about how to find an area or topic so from there you can go find out books and texts with which you can illustrate it that is one way of doing research the opposite can also be done start from examples or books or texts and move to generalization it is a little more challenging the deductive because you will have to find out what is there in this text that is important uh, which is what i will be trying to show you in my presentation so you can either start from a hypothesis uh, uh, you know a general uh, guess and then illustrate it with examples or you can start with examples characters texts etc and move to generalization now how do you do this when does this happen like an epiphany you should read a lot in that area that you like you should read a lot and when you read a lot like that you will start getting ideas oh these characters are similar in this text as well as that text this is there like that slowly slowly like a chain these thoughts will come that is how it comes to a person who is experienced in reading did you understand so it naturally comes at some point i will also show you how to get it so let me just quickly illustrate with some simple examples the first method is identify concepts 
and relate to authors, works, genres. You, when you read literary theory, etc., you will come across many concepts like this. Grotesque uh, is one concept, for example. Carnivalesque is another example. Cannibalism, folk elements, monstrosity. I just uh, randomly wrote some concepts that I can think of, that I could think of. Gender fluidity, etc. These concepts, read more about it. I'm so fascinated by carnivalesque or I'm so fascinated by gender fluidity. Read and read more about it. And then when you have enough experience with it, think about literary works, read uh, articles and books, and then you will find a new connection. Everybody knows that Salman Rushdie ha has post-colonial elements. Everybody knows that Salman Rushdie has magic realism. Everybody knows that Salma in Salman Rushdie, there is, um, say, hyper-reality, or there is, uh, what can I say, history, uh, historiographic metafiction. These are all known things. When you read about Salman Rushdie, don't take these known things that is commonly known every, by every, everyone. Don't take that for research. Instead, element of the grotesque uh, in Salman Razi's short fiction. You know, even don't take novels because that is overworked. So element of carnivalesque in uh, Parsi drama. I mean, I don't know if carnivalesque element is there in Parsi drama, but I think there is because Parsi drama is all about entertainment and, um, you know, the 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 marginal people that is a lot there dancing drama like hindi movies they are then cannibalism is there element of cannibalism in female buildings roman or salman Rushdie's short fiction cannibalism not only uh in the sense of uh man eating man but in a metaphoric sense also you know bodies or violence i think in salman Rushdie's midnight children maybe you can uh, think about whether there is an element of cannibalism, you know, because human body is cut up and described uh, so graphically, uh, you know, viscerally. Um, it 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 reminds me of uh, cannibalism actually. So I'm I'm saying that when you read more and more about it, cannibalism in other people's writings, cannibalism in literature in general, for example, then you will get some new connection like this like that folk elements, folk elements in, uh, say, Jane Austen, but Jane Austen is too old. Maybe in some contemporary women, woman writer or contemporary, um, say, subaltern writer, etc., you can find folk elements. Mainstream writer also, not necessarily subaltern. The concept of monstrosity, how it can be applied, even same thing, again, to Salman Rasi or uh, well-known writers. So, this is one method where you take familiar concepts, familiar authors, and you connect it in a new way. I hope you're getting me. Uh, so gender fluidity also like that in 21st century Indian poetry or female buildings, Romaine, etc. That is one method. You take concepts that are known, authors that are known and connect in new ways, which is automatically possible only if you read about it more and more. The second method is identify authors, works, genres, etc. that you like. Like I said, female buildings remain. Identify genres or identify works. And then what do you do? Identify patterns or concerns that emerge in all of them. You take a group of works that are somehow similar and identify what are some patterns there, concerns there. To help you understand further, you can think along these lines. What are the ways in which these authors can be compared and contrasted? How are their perspectives on something different? Something with like gender or nation or materialism. You know, if you look at theory, you will get that something. Because there is a theory of materialism. There is theory of migration. The theory of uh, theories of, uh, uh, say, space. So how are these writers differing? Uh, in terms of their depiction of space. How are these writers differing, differing in depiction of class? You know, things like that. How they relate to the same environment in different ways. For example, marginality or oppression are very common things. Uh, very common example of this is marginality, oppression, race, etc. But you can also apply it to 
uh, other things, uh, not so common areas also, how they relate to the same environment and how they are writing changed over time. You can take a group of writers and how they have changed over time, how they react differently to the same ideas or ideologies. Uh, that also can be another method. So I'm just giving by way of introduction. Now we will go into more deeper details. I was talking to my husband. Uh, as some of you might know, we have two pets. And uh, uh, I told my husband, come and sit down, help me. I need some research topics because I have to deliver this lecture. This is how it happened. And uh, he was not in a mood to help me with research topics. And he said, uh, he, the, our pets were here with us. And he said, why don't you suggest something about animal studies? Because that is one area these days, <laughs> animal studies. I said, okay, that's a good area. Uh, because in culture studies, animal studies is very common and very important these days. So what did I do? I uh, sat and wrote down all this. Animals the way they are treated must be so very different in Arabic literature or culture, in Chinese, Indian, Western, native, animals in post-colonialism, animals in world literature, like that I'm thinking. I, here I'm only writing my thoughts and I have divided my thoughts into sections, okay? And then I thought, uh, I will take a quick look. And in five minutes, I found that in animal studies, important contributions have been made. I Google searched on animal studies theory, important books, etc., And I found that there are books by John Berger on about uh, how to see animals. You know, it's a very important writer who wrote Ways of Seeing. There is a famous man called Thomas Nagel. Jacques Derrida wrote The Animal That I Am. J.M. Kutsi has written about animals. Very important writer again, we know. So that I got, it took me only five minutes till now. So that also I wrote down. Then I thought and researched in Google Scholar. I came across animal human relationships, animal human experiences. People have written about all these things, animals in everyday life, animals and selfhood of man, animals and nation, community, politics, animals and ethics and care. You know, you can apply this kind of thinking to any topic. When uh, you find a topic or an, an area, not topic area, Google search in Google Scholar, look at other people's article titles, write, the, write down like this all the things that you get. Brainstorm and write down like this. And then I found animal rights and politics. that you can uh, People are doing research on domestication and companionship of animals, pets and all that. Animal as food in relation to consumerism. Colo animals and colonialism and trade. You know, fur trade, ivory trade and all that uh, in colonialism. And then animals and health. Uh, animals and children's literature. Animals and subalternity. So many things are there. Out of this jungle of animal studies, what will we take as our topics? We have to write down the major theorists. We have to look at articles and even uh, write down novels and films. So I understood, okay, this is a big area. There are so many things happening in this area. Also, I came across terms like animality, animalism, animal culture. And I understood that if I'm going to do work on any area, I have to read like this, find out who the major theorists what are the articles? What are the terms? And make a glossary for myself. Write down the terms and understand, okay, these are the meanings of the terms. This is the implication. These people have written about it like that. For a few days, you have at least for a few days, you have to understand that area in general. Whether it is globalization studies or uh, migration studies or gender studies or materialism or renaissance studies, whatever studies you are taking. You have to do this exercise. Clear, guys? And then what did I do? I looked at the interesting books that I found about. I Google, I did Google search on these books. John Berger's book is called Why Look at Animals. That is a very interesting book that he has written. Why Look at Animals? And I found that there is this website. Can you see the screen, guys? I'm unmuting you for a minute. You're already unmuted. Yes, yes ma'am. You can yes, see the uh, web page, na? 
Yes, yes. You can. Okay. I'm muting you. So I quickly looked at a, a good web page that I found. Why look at animals? John Berger is talking about it. And of course, you should read at least one or two write-ups like this in detail. But even if you don't read, if you just Google, uh, if you just browse like the skimming and scanning, if you do, you will get a lot of um, keywords and points. Animals are the objects of our ever extending knowledge. Okay, I'm just going down. John Berger, author of Ways of Seeing. Why Look at Animals is an essay. It is part of the anthology about looking. I'm getting the points. Did you understand? And he starts from talking about the muses, the first human art as cavemen. He talks about spiritual deities, captive entertainment, entertaining with animals, pictures like this, cave, cave pictures. And if you have time, you should read all this like this. And then um, you continue browsing. Uh, he talks about how, um, what grew, drew us closer to our fellow beings, some kind of comfort they offered. You know, with animals, we get some comfort and animals offer a companionship. We are seeking something in our animals. We are dying to talk to our animals. We want them to talk back. We depict them anthropomorphically. So when I look at this, can I... Uh, uh, do animal studies based on children's literature, how animals are depicted in children's literature. Children's li li literature is also a broad area. You have to narrow that down. I'm getting thoughts like that. You can write down your thoughts and animals likeness and unlikeness from man he's talking about. When you read in detail, you will get it more. And then Salvador Dali Zodiac series. Oh, animals in painting. Animals in modernism, modernist literature and modernist painting. It will be good to connect literature and painting, maybe. I'm writing my thoughts, okay? Whatever thoughts I'm getting, I'm writing down and eventually something will emerge out of it. Uh, animal gaze is there, wow. So when I read, I'm noting and I will do extra Google search and whatever I like. At first, I will do a very broad Google search on the area, but slowly, slowly, I have to narrow it down and bring it towards a topic. You can't just go on reading everything like that. So animal gaze, you know that feminist gaze is there, post-colonial gaze is there. You could consider writing a research paper or something on animal gaze, and eventually you can develop into, into a project. Then Aristotle devel uh, wrote history of animals, it seems, that I didn't know. So I am writing it down and then uh, I'm going again. Uh, why not just look at any one animal like dogs or uh, cow or uh, horse or maybe one animal I can focus on like that I'm thinking. Then like this, I hope you understood. I'm just getting points from browsing through uh, material on this book. It was a book review, not the book itself. It was a book review. Then I am looking at Derrida's The Animal That Therefore I Am. Again, I will get, uh, you know, Google. I can Google like this. And then again, I Google and find out interesting books uh, in this area. Animal Revolution. Wow. A witty, informative, captivating work at the juncture of post-humanism. You have to copy paste the descriptions of these interesting books and save in a file and then read it later then all this will help you shape your area. Did you understand animal revolution is an interesting area. I have written, uh, I have copied pasted uh, the write up on it. Creative, speculative, nonfiction can be applied in it, it seems. Well, and then I found another book, Precarious Partners. It is about horses. Sometimes you will get the Google book itself, uh, copy or uh, take a screenshot of the, um, contents page and save it because you will know what this book is about. From the contents page itself, you will get like animal magnetism. See, ideas you are getting. So save it like that. And also the write up on this book that also you should save like this. I have illustrated it easily. You will get in book reviews, etc. what this book is about and keep separate notes for every subsection. When you read John Berger, 
you are getting more and more scholarly about this, whatever area you are working on. Uh, so you find major theorists, write down their ideas like this in your own words. Don't forget to make your own notes. And also make notes on other theorists to read on. From what you're reading like this, you will get other theorists to read on that also. Then books depicting animals make a list. Animal studies is only an objective correlative here. I am using it as an example. It is an interesting example. You can use it in anything. Uh, you can use these ideas in any subject or any area. Key ideas from book reviews. Re remember everybody, book review. Don't forget they are a wealth of information. Book reviews are very, very important in understanding uh, all these books because we can't get all these books suddenly until you decide which book you should get. Book reviews will guide you. And then read on concepts and terms that you come across. Like this, all the concepts and terms you come across, you should make notes on, add to your glossary. Identify all related areas. Now, animals, you still don't have a topic. You are still in animal studies. Suddenly, from something I read, I found that people have been writing about milk, cattle, cows, milk, milk studies and dairy culture. That, th there are words like that within cultural studies. This idea came from this book review that I saw. Cultures of milk. I found this book review. Andrea S. Wiley's book, Cultures of Milk, book review. And I saw this and wow, I read it. I got a lot of ideas from uh, this book review. Then what did I do? I went and searched for the exact book. Wiley's book I found in the internet and I uh, read about it. Look at this, Cultures of Milk, the biology and meaning of dairy products in United States and India. Andrea Wiley has written about India. So I am reading about it. This is interesting. I'm thinking I do more Google search. Another book I found. Dekho kya hai? Reimagining Milk by Andrea Wiley. Whole book is there in Google. Not whole, but condensed page. Everything is there. So I go through this. Whatever is available, I am reading. And I read the preface. And I'm getting more and more confidence. I make notes. And then another book I got. That book is Milk Culture of Eurasia. So in India, Asia, everywhere, there are different milk cultures. Sometimes you won't get the entire book. Sometimes you will get parts of it. Sometimes you will get only the contents page, but even that will help you. Finally, when you decide this is your area, you can procure these books. You can get these books. Then another book I found. Dekho kya hai? Wow, that is very different. The portrayal of breastfeeding in literature. Are wa, aisa bhi hai book. Analyzes the depiction of breastfeeding in literature. So, animal studies, uh, women, breastfeeding, all are connected. I'm getting the idea. Then another book I read, again, I found from this area, Mother's Milk and Male Fantasy. And then... Oh, these are all studied in French narrative. So I'm getting ideas on how to shape my topics, etc. And then I am thinking uh, about milk. You know, I suddenly remembered Stuart Hall's Circuit of Culture. Stuart Hall talked about Circuit of Culture. I am thinking, let me do research on milk studies because that is not a very common area. Everybody will not know it. It looks a little new. And... Uh, what does Stuart Hall say about the pr uh, pr production of milk, consumption of milk? All these are part of that culture. Uh, you know, the, it can be a topic related to production. It can be a topic related to consumption. It can be a topic related to regulation, who is controlling, or a combination of these. Representation, how is it represented in literary works? What kind of identity is related to it? You know, for example, uh, in, in the case of breastfeeding, uh, trans women, uh, they, you know, we, we just heard about in Kerala, a trans man delivered a child and uh, we talk about trans women adopting children or having children, etc. So it is a little oppressive, this concept of breastfeeding. It, it doesn't work the same for all genders, for all in all cases. So is there a, and I'm reminded of Mahashweta Devi's breast stories, where in breast giver or stanadaini, 
uh, Jashoda is a lower class woman. She is breastfeeding the Zamindari children. So I am aware that there is so much related to milk. And then I coin a term as I read uh, and get more and more confidence. I coined the term milk narratives. I did not find this term in the internet, but I'm coining it milk narratives, narratives of milk. And then I found that Deborah Valens has written a very major book called Milk. Culture Studies book it is. The first cultural history of milk. Wow. Um, I, I, if I'm doing anything on milk studies, maybe this is an important book that I should procure. So I read about it. Ultimately, we'll understand there's a lot of politics and uh, power at work in this area. So this is how I find a research area. Only after you actually read in this research area, will you be able to find out some uh, very good topic there. And then you can give a title to your topic. Did you understand? This is only a, a spectacular illustration that I made. It doesn't have to be fancy all the time. It can be a very ordinary uh, topic relating to uh, literature and authors that you know and all that. But uh, this is the method in which you uh, use your reading. This is how you connect from one to the other. This is how you make notes. This is how you become a scholar in that area. Once you have read so much and made notes about what are the important topics and areas and concepts, authors, etc., then you can approach your supervisor and say, this is my area. I like this. Will you please help me shape this topic? These are all the concerns I find in this area. Like that, you should approach a research supervisor. If it is literature, I found randomly books that everybody knows in tests of the Durbervilles, you can say that is a milk narrative. There is so much about milk. In Blue as Tie, Pecola wants to drink milk and become uh, accepted. That is also a milk narrative. In Song of Solomon, the author, the protagonist's name is Milkman because he's always drinking his mother's milk. And in Mahashweta Devi's breast stories also, uh, breastfeeding and milk is a very important. So, so many different varieties of literary works. If you sit and actually do research and do wide reading, you can get books like this. And then frame questions to guide yourself. Well, while you find out books like this in your area, you should ask questions in this manner. How is milk culture or whatever I'm reading on related, related to social identity? How is it relating to class? How is it related to culture, race? If you ask such questions, you will get some uh, direction in which uh, to read. You will understand how to read, how, which way to go. So how is this topic that I'm reading on related to all these concepts? In what ways does this intersect with issues of social inclusionism? These are important terms you should ask in the context of uh, research. Subalternity, colonialism, neocolonialism, consumerism, and also national and historical contexts. Like this, you should ask several questions to yourself. When you ask your super, uh, contact your supervisor, I am reading on uh, this area. Will you uh, ask me some questions uh, with which I will be able to read better? You know, with the help of other people, you can frame these questions sometimes. And when you read, you keep this question in mind. It will give you more ideas. And then I understood that uh, milk is not a simple thing. In Brahminism, it is one thing. In Dalit literature, it is another thing. Obviously, I can relate it to patriarchy, globalization, social events like uh, white revolution. So it is getting very broad. And within that, you have to shape up your topic. Did you understand? And also beef eating. So this is the basic uh, methodology of working within your area, identifying the important concepts. And then you can draw some related, you can draw a line or a, uh, uh, um, you can group together the related concepts and put together that will become your research topic. When you, you should make, make a mind map of all these areas and Whatever you have put in the mind map, the concepts that you have put in the mind map, when you put some of them together, you will get your topic. That is how it works. Did you understand? And the same thing you can do with many other interdisciplinary areas today.
like migration studies. I have just put a simple copy pasted only, my, uh, a simple definition of migration studies, a broad diverse area connecting economics and race and ethnicity and also of course, literature. When these days, when you do research, it is not only literary texts that you are taking, it is also paintings, blog entries, uh, and other kinds of narratives also, maybe even photographs. In migration studies, for example, photographs can be a very important resource. Then I was checking online. Many of you are willing to go abroad. You, are, you may be trying to go abroad. There are so many areas that I found where uh, faculty members from foreign universities are working on. In relation to language, rhetoric and composition pedagogy, I don't know one thing about it, but I thought I should share with you. I saw in many international universities, faculty working on these areas, rhetoric and composition pedagogy. And also a lot of people are working on electronic and digital textualities, you know, how textualities change with the coming of computers. Because the how writing, reading, such processes change with computers. So there in that in those areas, a lot of research scope is there. So instead of just sticking to traditional literature, you could uh, think of these new areas also. And I saw that in relation to computers, people are doing research on design equity, data, English department people only, people from English departments, design equity, data feminism, data justice, and things like that, datafication, you know. So these are some very new areas that I found. Also, material culture and object studies. I found this fascinating. So many English department people abroad are working on material culture studies. It is an interdisciplinary field. So many of you are searching for areas, even though you don't actually do a research on material culture and object studies, you can bring in object studies into your existing research. It will be a totally new approach. You know, the relationship between people and their things. Suppose you are doing a research project on feminism. Suppose you are doing a research project on post-coloniality or whatever. If you read on object studies, within, your, within the gamut of your research, within your novel, you may be able to apply some insights from object studies. The relationship between people and things, the making history, preservation and interpretation of objects. I really want to see how object studies can be applied on God of small things, for example. You know, so many things are there in God of Small Things, starting from uh, Rahel's uh, plastic watch to uh, buildings, uh, Kari Saipu's house, so many things, the boat, you know, relationship between people and things. God of, uh, why don't some of you do a, first of all, always write a research paper and then only develop it into a research, a PhD dissertation. First, explore it in a small paper. Uh, so that you will know the area properly. I just illustrated how you can uh, apply object studies and create a fascinating uh, research paper that maybe nobody would have thought about. So please read about it. Another fascinating area is critical heritage studies. India is rich with traditions and heritage. And this concept in culture studies, this area in culture studies, reconceptualizes heritage by paying attention to power, identity, economic development, conflict, etc., uh, There are so many novels where uh, local communities have to, um, you know, leave their Sula, for, for example, by Tony Morrison. Local community is getting destroyed because they are being changed uh, and some, something else is coming up there. Like that, people are displaced in many novels. Uh, you know, that kind of uh, novels you can identify and look at how traditional heritage or urban heritage, you know, contemporary monuments are also being made. For all this, how people are displaced and how it affects them, how their relationship with space is defined, all that you can look at through critical heritage studies perspectives. Then urban studies is there. This is also not very much worked on study of cities. Uh, you know, how cities are inhabited, the architecture of cities, 
uh, you know, as it comes out in movies or even novels. Uh, for example, in Zadie Smith, in Zadie Smith's novels, London is a very strong presence. The study of London City, uh, uh, you know, looking at London City uh, and Zadie Smith, for example, there might be lots of other uh, writers also of, of uh, similar kind who are relevant in urban studies. And the other day, I noticed that our very popular and famous professor, uh, Dr. Pramod K. Nair, uh, is now dealing with vulnerability studies. That is where I came across this term. I thought I should introduce you to this term, vulnerability studies. He is running a, 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 depart, a center or something for vulnerability studies, I saw. Vulner I was fascinated. What is that? I had never heard it before. Vulnerability is, again, a multidisciplinary concept. Uh, denoting weakness or susceptibility to form vulnerability studies in the context of postcoloniality, gender, um, then, um, you know, marginality, subalternity, etc. You can do trauma, all this maybe you can apply. So I thought I should introduce all these interdisciplinary areas to you, which I found fascinating and which might bring uh, new approaches uh, to your subject. You know what I did? I always do something. I Google search for other people's research projects. I just sit and Google search and look at the contents page of contemporary research journals. I don't have time to read. I don't have the understanding also to read and understand all those papers, but the titles of those papers will give me lots of ideas. Do you understand? You should also do the same. This is a very practical uh, thing that you can do. You should look at other people's titles in Google Scholar, in uh, the contents page of journals, in conference papers. You know, there are conference websites where, uh, you know, conference alerts, websites, etc., through which you can look at what are the conferences happening these days. Uh, what are the papers like? Oh my God, those, those are all so updated, up-to-date areas. Don't uh, go asking people for research areas. It's all easy. Now, when you read an article or a book, uh, you should write a brief summary. I'm not going into the details too much. Uh, when, when something you read, you should immediately think, okay, from here, I should do this research. From this point, I should do this research. This, uh, this idea gives me this uh, direction for research. Like that, you should read books. When you read books from the book itself, you will be able to cross connect to other areas. Uh, you will get other uh, concepts and authors, et cetera, to look up. Like that, you should read. Did you understand? And you should ask yourself these questions. How is this study related to my area of research? Suppose you are reading somebody's article. What is the relevance of this to my research? And when you're reading an article, what is this study about? What are they trying to argue? Like this, if you think, you will be able to write your argument properly. What is the underlying argument of this article? What is the methodology used in the study? Can I adapt it? Like that, it is, it is not stealing, but getting inspired by other people's research. Did you understand? You can also think like, are there words or terms used in the study that I can use in my dissertation? Huh? What are these concepts? Can I use them in my dissertation? Like that, you should think and locate the books cited in the bibliographies of other books. You know, somebody would have made a bibliography. From that bibliography, you will get the books that you need to procure, that you need to get. Use Google Scholar and get people's articles related to your topic. Read their bibliography. Use those books and articles. Google search with keywords should be a one-time, uh, should, I'm so sorry, it should not be a, a one-time activity. I, I, I forgot to add not. It should not be a one-time activity that you do at the beginning of your research. You should continue to do it. Google search with keywords, organize material. And when you read and find appropriate material, you should always organize it. You should always organize what you have read according to theme, theory, chapters, relevance. Did you understand? Like this, you should organize what you have read. Uh, so everything you are reading, 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 and ultimately you don't know what you have read, where to look for. It should not be like that. Put everything in the right compartments. 
find the gaps in the collected material, search for appropriate material in that area. Whatever material you have collected, what is the gap there? Is there something missing? Uh, can I uh, do my research there? Can I write about it? Like that you should search. When you read, that means you should read critically. Did you understand? Here are some tools that you can use to find the relevant information. Look at the table of contents and index of books. Always use the index of books. Also use the table of contents. You know, when you read, uh, when you Google search, you will find something uh, in a Google uh, book. Okay. Don't just read that area. Go look at the contents page of that book read it, then it will really help you. Uh, you, will, you will be able to get new information from the contents page. And you should use find in page. Always search using find in page. Always uh, you apply your keywords and find whether those keywords are there in that article. Read that area clearly. Also bookmark to identify a passage later. Always use the bookmark option. Uh, in uh, computer and also insert comment when you read insert comment so that you can note your observations later and cross connect you should always write your thoughts there in the pdf uh, etc and also hyperlink to write out your arguments and link it to relevant online resource when you type out your chapter hyperlink there this point that I am writing is there in this article, hyperlink it. I showed you hyperlinking in, the, uh, in my presentation. I had hyperlinked and from the PD, PPT, I had gone to the um, web page, isn't it? So like that. And when you read, the main ideas should be written down. You should note your main ideas like this. These are the main things in this article. And from there, sub points, examples, etc. Like this, you should write your notes. Main, don't just copy from the book and write completely like that, but main ideas, categorize, organize like this. That will really help you later. And also, this is what you have read in the uh, article, and this can be your thoughts on this. Did you understand? And when you write your chapter, you can write this plus this. Did you understand? That is very, very important to write your thoughts also. On left side, you write your thoughts. On right side, you write the ideas you got from the books that you read. Okay, you are raising questions because this kind of uh, engagement, when you're thinking like that critically, it will really help you to write better your chapters. What should I agree with? What should I disagree with? Like that you should think. And then the ration, are you tired? I'm going on and on. I just need like a few minutes more. Uh, rationale of your research means why are you doing this research? Identify the research gap. What is missing that you have to identify? It should have some social relevance. When you are writing about literature also, uh, even though it is not directly to do deal with our society, it should contribute to that area. It should contribute to the discipline somehow. It should help other researchers at least. You should not only review, but also analyze uh, existing literature, critically analyze existing literature. When you are writing about somebody else's ideas in your literature review, you should critically uh, apply uh, your analysis there. Develop a knowledge framework. From all the reading that you have done, develop a knowledge framework where you position your research. Your research should come within that framework of reading that you have done like that. And how do you organize your literature review? Ask yourself, what other research has been done in that area relating to my topic? And what are the main ideas that have emerged in that area? What you should ask yourself, what is already known about the topic and what remains to be discovered? You should actually write down these questions in your notebook and answer these questions. Otherwise, your idea will not be clear. Like a, an exam, you should write short notes on all this. In what ways can I organize the most important past findings about my research problem? 
uh, what are the past findings, how I can organize it. Remember, guys, any of you who want to go abroad, if you write your research proposal like this, you will easily be accepted. Is there any prior research that is unique or groundbreaking? Is there any research that marks a turning point? Like this, write down these questions. You, uh, you can uh, use the same questions itself. You can write your own questions also. How can I enumerate the past developments and changes that have appeared in the past relating to my topic? How is my topic related to the past developments, the past readings that I have made? How can I critique existing research? This list that I have given here may not be useful right now, but when you are reading for research, write down these questions and use them. Then at that point, this will become very, very useful. It will become helpful to organize your literature review. And the methodology is the discussion of theoretical concepts. What are the concepts that I can use how, how can I use a mixed methods approach? What kind of data will I use? Even if I am reading uh, based on books, even if my material is based on books, how will I read my books? How will I read these novels? What method of analysis will I use? These are the questions you should ask. And you should write these answers. How will you understand? By reading other people's dissertations, by looking at what are the common methods used. Did you understand? And you can choose from there. Is enough information available for my study? Or can new data be found? Like that also, you should think. And all this will go into writing your methodology. And lastly, uh, in many research proposals, you don't have to give chapter divisions, but it will be good to have an idea of chapter divisions. Obviously, first you have to write the introduction. Then you have to write literature review. Uh, an enumeration of existing research. Then you have to write your own analysis and findings in core chapters. In core chapters. In the core chapters, you should do analysis and findings, analysis of your primary sources and studying them according to the secondary sources. And finally, you have to provide results, conclusion, and then bibliography. Uh, introduction can be a historical overview of the topic. Historical overview. Literature review should be critical. Analysis should be further subdivided. It should be spaka organized. Results and conclusion can point to further research by raising questions. You can point at what other people can do. And then you should write the bibliography. How will you write bibliography? Study the MLA style sheet before you start. Even before you start writing and doing research, you should know the MLA style sheet. APA, you should use for international publications. Many people want APA. So if you're doing that, study APA also. And there are software, uh, there is software uh, available these days for MLA, uh, you know, uh, citation. So use the appropriate software, find out, uh, Google, uh, you know, research on the software and make it correct and make notes on bibliographic details throughout the course of your research. Bibli bibliography cannot be written suddenly at the end of your research. From the beginning, you have to make notes on bibliography, keep the details ready. All the data should be ready. Very, very important. They do this abroad always. Prepare an annotated bibliography at the initial stages of research and keep expanding it. What do you mean by annotated bibliography? A bibliography where you write a little write-up on all these books. I showed you, I took the title of the book and I copied from the internet a little bit detail about the book. Many people have already written it. For your own purpose, at least to do that. What is this book about? Write a note, an annotation, so that when you're actually writing your chapters, it will be tremendously useful. Lastly, I'm winding up the best writing habits. When you're actually writing your uh, dissertation, if possible, every day you should write. If possible, whenever you get new ideas, whenever you read a book, you should write. 
Otherwise, suddenly at the end, you can't write your chapter. You, there could be an utter confusion. So start writing as early as possible and read as you write and write as you read. As you are writing, you will find gaps, then read it. As you are reading, you will want to write, so write it. Write notes on everything you read. Whatever is relevant to your topic, you should write notes on it and save it, organize it. Organize your notes under chapter heads from the beginning. These days, because you can easily search online, I mean, in the computer, this will be tremendously useful. Keep bibliographic details and citations correct and up to date. Then you will be a great researcher. You will be a great scholar. If you take shortcuts, you might land in trouble because uh, we should write a uh, dissertation that has some value. Haven't you seen uh, professors from international universities, central universities, big, big universities? Wow, the way they speak, the way they write, their papers are all so amazing. Don't you wish you want to write like them? This is the way. Start reading, slowly, slowly build up. The first time you do research or do writing, you can't do it ex exceptionally well. So slowly and steadily read more, more, more and improve yourself. That is the only way, actually. There is no shortcut to this. And read your own writing at a later time and edit it. Whatever you have read about your chapters, etc., after you do more research and reading, always edit it because the first draft is never the best draft. Okay, so that is about what I wanted to tell you about research. I hope it helped you. Um, we can now uh, discuss any doubts or problems or questions that you have. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, in chat box, we have a few queries. Mm -hmm. Before that, if anyone wants to speak and uh, ask their query, they can. Please anyone ask. want to unmute yourself, they can. Manasi said, I want to ask. Okay, Manasi, then please proceed. Oh, unmute nahi hai Okay, sorry. Unmuted. Madam, I'm Mukesh Bolrao. Can you suggest me something about ecology as far as Indian, Indian writers are concerned? Yes. There are uh, very basic books on ecology and um, environmental studies like Cheryl Glotfelty and all that. But ecological studies have changed so much. There are so many new approaches in ecology, like green studies and a hybrid approaches, ecology in relation to ethnicity, ecology in relation to technology, ecology in relation to space studies like that. So uh, I have already done a series of videos on research areas, um, Kalyani Vallath research areas. If you Google search, you will get four or five videos there. I have given a lot of uh, new terms relating to ecology and environmental studies. Uh, if you watch the, that video, you will get a lot of ideas. And uh, Madam, I, have, I have read something about uh, this one, uh, Ruskin bond. So can I go uh, move uh, ahead with that? Ruskin bond and ecology is a very direct and uh, simple connection. You can but within Ruskin bond, relating to ecology, you should find out something unique. Then you can. Uh, Madam, can I go for comparative studies between Ruskin bond and other writers as far as ecology is concerned? You can. Okay. But Thank the challenge know. will be to find to yeah. read more about Ruskin bond and ecology and find out something unique there which nobody has already talked about. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Madam, can you suggest some topic from your side which can be easier for us? I'm a school teacher, so I don't get much time, ma'am. So I'm feeling... No, no, like... no. You have to consistently find some time. Whatever uh, area you like, you have to uh, read and find time. And it it it, it, it should never be done in, uh, over the table like that. Right, ma'am. Mm. Yes, certainly I'm doing, ma'am. So, uh, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your yeah, suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Hello. 
Hi, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Ma'am, uh, like you mentioned the materialism and objectification theory uh, about objects. So it got my mind running. I'm actually not in the process of research, but I really like that topic. Objectification, so, nahi, object studies. Yeah, sorry, ma'am. Object studies and materialism. Yeah. So it got me thinking and I uh, remembered when you talked about Galsworthy's The Silver Box play in your Videopedia videos and uh, the depiction of the silver box according to class. So You, that you can I'm... do uh, object studies on Galsworthy, not just one play. Yes, ma'am. Mm. You maybe you can. And I'm not an also... expert on that at all. I just know a little bit about it. You have to really do a lot of reading and then uh, see if it is workable. Yes, ma'am. And another angle I found was uh, how uh, the rise of materialism is giving rise to consumerism and also the emotional angle relating to materialism. Like we buy things in an impulse and then we get an instant gratification, but that goes after, afterwards sure. sometimes. And how rich people's relationship with objects and materialism has shaped and we can do like a his historical analysis of that. Maybe, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, that's so. These were all my ideas. Yeah, good. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. I'm your student who is currently pursuing in your course, and I hope you remember me. Uh, I'm doing my BA final year, ma'am, huh. and uh, it will actually help me a lot, and it's so informative. And I hope this session will induce me to start uh, research from today, ma'am. Uh, but ma'am, I have a doubt. Uh, may I take a work and just compare the controversial theme about the work and that has been said by the other authors? You want to take a work and do what? Uh, a theme will be said in, in a particular uh, work, right? So may I uh, just compare it with the other authors like who has been uh, controversial to uh, the theme that has been said by the actual author? Like what yeah, I think. maybe you can yes I uh, we need to really work and work on it and see what exactly you mean but I think you can yes yeah I can ma'am then the title of my project will be like uh, I have to uh, note about the both authors or the authors uh, whom I read or something ma'am yeah whatever theme you are taking whatever primary sources you are taking that should come as the title oh okay okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Am I audible? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, uh, actually, I've been planning uh, for the topic to come up. So, lately, I've been reading. So, I had a question that if I were to, uh, uh, if I were to uh, uh, prepare a topic on the portrayal of women, let's say. So, can I include... On the portrayal uh, of what? Portrayal of women, women. Yes. In, so, uh, can I include uh, the text or short stories with a certain contemporary movie as well? I mean, can I include both of the things or it has to be separate? Either you work on the movie or you work on the text. Two things. One, you can do short stories and movies together. No problem. These days it is accepted and it, even encouraged. But uh, don't just do a uh, portrayal of women. That is an old approach. You should find out something unique in the portrayal of women and make that your topic. Uh, yes, ma'am. I've been working on that only. So it was yes. just a broad idea, portrayal yeah. of women. But yeah. I've been yeah, yeah, yeah. Then okay. Um, good okay, evening, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, please. One by one. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, can you suggest me some uh, something regarding ELT in pronunciation, ma'am? I'm not an expert on ELT. Um, but any suggestions regarding recent approaches? I, can, I will have to read and do research in order to talk about ELT. Sorry. Um, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Ashwati, and I would like to know, like, as of now, I've chosen a topic regarding, you know, a postpartum depression. Mm. I, I didn't understand regarding uh, what. I mean, a uh, postpartum depression. Huh. Uh, so, ma'am, I'm I'm a little stuck because I as of now I, I it is not moving anywhere. Like I don't know uh, the problem. I I find it a little hard uh, because the text which I've chosen is entirely of this 
postpartum depression from from the very beginning to the end of the novel is all about postpartum depression how the lady is moving with it and finally you know ends up why your research project is not moving is maybe because you are not reading enough you should uh, look at it from different approaches forget yes, the novel now and uh, think about the uh, theoretical approaches to postpartum depression and uh, mm-hmm. look at it from sociological gender perspectives and uh, psychological perspectives do a little bit of general reading and then you will come across some perspectives and ideas which will really give you a break and then you can come back to the novel uh, yes my biggest thing is like there are not much works on that particular novel i don't believe that there will be and then it will be adapted into a movie so it no, i don't we, you don't need material on the novel you need okay. material on that concept you okay. should read okay. widely yeah, yeah. about you should that. you should read about as many books as you can where uh, postpartum depression is depicted or discussed okay ma'am okay research is when you do uh, a research on a book on a novel okay. you don't necessarily have to find all the material about that book itself yeah yes ma'am did you understand for yes. example when i was doing research on children's films one breakthrough i got was when i was reading about scarlet letter there was no di- uh, no connection whatsoever but it led me to think in a certain way and then you understand so read extra yes and there are multiple things that are striking me with things that i am not able to make a thread or like yeah <laughs> sometimes you should understand it's na- normal yes as i said put it down in writing yes write mm-hmm. down like this in a you know take a big chart paper write down all this and look at it and uh try to connect and like that it sometimes solves itself yes ma'am. thank you ma'am yes. madam uh, uh, ma'am, madam uh, uh, ma'am good evening ma'am please can i can i say i have been like trying to say something for a long time now okay okay speak yeah ma'am 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 a big admirer from west bengal here and uh, uh first of all uh, ma'am i have um, like a couple of topics i would like your uh, view on them for example uh, depiction of menstruation in literature and third gender in partition and refugee literature and uh, barnard show as dietitian and use of food in his work like i have this couple of uh, like topics not i i mean the topics are there but i will search in them so i i just want to know if i'm going in the uh, like correct direction that uh, i will have to know more about your project and read what you have written to really understand if you are going correctly uh there are other people who have already written things related to it in our newsletter koel didn't we have a, a write up on or we we are going to bring it out uh, on yes, menstruation ma'am. and ha huh? yeah on menstruation we are going to uh, do i mean in our next newsletter it will be there ha huh. so uh, we are uh, we i i know this person who did that research sometimes when you connect with these people and um, you know read what other people have written etc you will get a clarity the coordinators are reminding me that i have class at 7:30 but that's okay we can go up till 7 28 ask good hello ma'am, ma'am. Uh, okay good evening yes. ma'am ma'am my topic is color symbolism in margaret atwood's novel the testament so i would like to know how deeply we can take this topic like uh, i used to get in the way that different colors have different uh, perspectives or different emotions to that uh, uh, to a particular situations rather than that what is that uh, uh, utility in literature colors listen uh, are you dealing with only one novel for your phd uh, uh, currently i took only one novel uh, i think uh, it is not enough to take one novel one thing is uh, take uh, either other works of margaret atwood or take dystopian novels or feminist dystopian novels or some some er- broader area so that because it this looks very narrow okay and uh, then uh, color symbolism in madame bovary color like that extra other works where color symbolism is there and how people have written about it please check it out because from there you will get lots of connections 
Okay. There will be philosophy. Madam, I'm not an expert on color symbolism. Madam, madam but, it's Mukesh here. Can I, can I speak, Madam? Mukesh? Can, can I just complete what I'm saying? One yeah, minute. please, please, ma'am. Please. So what I was saying is read when you are stuck like that, read what how other people have done it and you will get philosophies and authors names and things like that from there. So it will be a very big break breakthrough. So read like that. Did okay. you understand everything? It does not have to come from our head. You, we can know from our reading. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Okay. Uh, yes, Mukesh, Hello, will you, will you yes, please? Yes, madam, just uh, 30 seconds only. Ma'am, actually, I would like to know, for example, I was talking about ecology and about Ruskin bonds. So I have to take a particular aspect like flora, fauna, or nature depiction, or I have to incorporate all those things. You can do either way. Depends on your uh, approach and topic. You can do either way. अगर मान लीजिए मैम कि नेचर के बारे में माने फ्लोरा के बारे में रस्किन बोन को लिखा है और कुछ राइटर्स लिखे हैं तो इकोलॉजी में सबको हम मिला सकते हैं मैडम मिला सकते हैं हां या या थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू मैडम गौरी इज गौरी यस मैम या व्हाट इज इट से क्विकली मैम आई एम प्लानिंग टू समबडी वाज गोइंग टू स्पीक आई विल लिसन टू यू आफ्टर दिस या गौरी Ma'am, uh, I'm planning to do a research on a Greek writer. I mean, uh -huh. a Greek film director and his film uh, based on psychoanalysis, especially Lacanian psychoanalysis. So, if I put it as a, a research proposal, will it be a problem? Because I think it is not connected to our social situation, particularly. No, 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 no problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay. No problem at all. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Last question. Somebody was going to speak. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak. Okay, ma'am. Uh, actually, my re uh, interest area is eco psychology, ma'am. And uh, my primary sources uh, were uh, short fictions by Tam Chulao, Mashaveta Devi, and Sara Joseph. I'm confused about it uh, because uh, I don't know how many works should I uh, include in my, for my uh, PhD thesis. Six. Six or seven works or eight up to eight works people do. Actually, these are short uh, stories. Time to allow, by time to allow, there, there are nine to uh, ten. And then Masvita Devi, these are uh, breast stories. They are only three. Uh, and but Shara Dosa, these are if I uh, talk about the masculine of the virgin, they are twenty one. Twenty one. Is it all in one book? Yes, masculine of the virgin. So that means you are taking three books. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Or should I include more like a? Uh, but it about... also depends on your guide. Some people will have different opinions. I would say no problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. That's yeah. Uh, Indian mythological fiction. I have to work on it. Okay. Amish or uh, uh, Anand Nilakanthan or uh, Ro uh, Ashok Banker. So many people have written about mythology. It's, it's the craze these days. You will easily find authors. And uh, like I did for milk narratives, you have to read and uh, identify the keywords and concepts and write a mo mind map. And then you can, yeah? You can find. Okay, I have talked this now. Uh, Koyal. Let us stop the discussion. Anybody who has more queries, please send us messages in the groups. I will be willing to answer and help you in whatever way I can. Yes, Thank dear. Yeah. Please be active in our Bharat Test Public Group and Cultural Studies Research Forum Group for any updates. Yes. And now, Shruti, can you please proceed with you? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I am wondering how I can show my gratitude toward you, ma'am. I find myself privileged enough to be a part of this imposing event organized by your Cultural Studies Research Forum and hear from you directly. I do not know how to proceed with a formal vote of thanks note for you. Rather, I would like to acknowledge the contributions that you have made to us. You always remind me of a quotation from APJ Abdul Kalam sir, who once said, to become a nation of beautiful minds, 
I strongly feel there are three key societal members who can make a difference. They are the father, the mother, and the teacher. I know everyone will agree with me that you are more than a teacher to us. Like our parents, you always stay with us. I know, like me, all of you get immense benefits from this lecture by Matt. Your amazing lecture indeed develops a strategic idea about research methodology. Thank you very much for this insightful lecture, Matt. Today, as a representative of your Cultural Studies Research Forum, I would like to express my love and sincere thanks to you for gifting us with your soulful knowledge of the vast field of research methods. We look forward to gathering more from you in the upcoming discourses on various fields to enlighten us with your creative methods. And now I would love to thank you with all sincerity and my Cultural Studies Research Forum team and also our whole team tips. Wide round of applause and thanks to all the dear participants who made the event a memorable one. I would like to thank all of you present here for making time to be with us today and helping us make this event a super duper success. Thank you one and all. And now it's time to conclude today's session. Have a joyful evening ahead. See you and keep learning and never forget the motto of our Bhalat test, the best is yet to be. Thank you, ma'am. We have shared the Culture Studies uh, Telegram group link in the chat box. Please join. Thank you so much, Shruti. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. All the best to all of you. Be in touch uh, with whatever limited knowledge I have. I'll try to help you with your research problems. Practical. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much, ma'am.